But in the ancient times, what language is, is actually the stars, but in a specific order to when the first star hits the first point of when the story is being told. Let, let me reiterate this for you very clearly. The first language that was developed, which is a very advanced technology, was designed for it to start right where the, the disk in the sky starts. And then end where the disk in the sky ends. And then the language was also the calendar. Okay? So because the language was the calendar, this was like synchronizing a clock. And that clock was human beings. The images of the word. Okay? So when you, all the humans running around in the matrix are actually created from the word. They're words themselves. Now, remember, we talked about that there's a space that's outside of this that doesn't consist of words. It consists of sounds. But inside here, all of the creations were created with words. Okay? Now, the reason why this is so imperative to understand is, is that as we move through this, okay, so let me, let me just finish that because I, I, can't go so, I can't go fast here because if, if we can't. We, we, there's no need to go fast here. If we don't understand this, because the, the, the consciousness will unpack this all by itself as long as it's able to grasp it. Getting out of the matrix actually consists of that in the subconscious mind, the subconscious mind starts playing back some of the codes that I'm talking about, about the language, about certain things that obviously don't make sense. And then it starts putting stuff in play. It's like a puzzle piece. And it just starts unraveling and unpacking it, and then it puts it into like this perfect shape. That's what it is that we're doing right now. But we have to be aware of exactly how all this was supposed to work. Because when, let's say, the sun attempted to create, or not attempted, but was creating, created into a world using the word, all that stuff was so powerful, it, it would be foolish to be looking onto that like, Oh, they made a mistake and all of that kind of stuff, because it's like you're, you're like a spectator <laughs> compared to time lords and people who know how to move around inside of these vehicles. Now you can understand how it works and why for sure you can go beyond even what they've reached, because there is there is a beyond with your great mother. But to operate in the matrix, you need to understand the masters of the matrix are indeed masters because they are aware of a certain thing that's going on that's irrefutable. And the basis of this is that the first language or the code, like so if you can imagine man sitting there as an, the, new, the new creation, because the first ones were the angels or the angles. They're like programs or tools to carry out the manifestations of the words inside of the matrix. But then they get pull, pushed aside because a new version comes called man, and, 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 and woman, of course, but actually woman was already here, a new version that comes that's called man. And now this process starts where, let me just get into alignment here, that now all of existence, basically, all of how everything would happen in the reality, the code, if you may, needs to be implanted into the first manifestations mind like it's like almost like a program but it's organic in itself the creation itself but what's given to it and kind of embedded in it and that it starts thinking with is inorganic in that respect it's like a crystal remember crystals are inorganics so let me explain how all that works so in language, what you can imagine here is from the diagram that's in the center that says the monogram of the alphabet, okay? We're just bearing witness to a few things about this triangle or more importantly, this tetrahedron and how it's irrefutable that somehow this matrix is designed based on tetrahedrons. That's why we have this big ass pyramid sitting out in the desert over there and this constant reminder of this pyramid because this pyramid, it, it means something. The first thing it means as it's been pointed out, not only by the rabbis, 
Also, Stan Tennant's work directly, Daniel Winter's work, who got sued by Stan Tennant, who said that he took it from him, when it is the master knowledge and it actually belongs to everyone. And it's just that the first language, it's even when you see Hebrew written here, this is incorrect. Hebrew was like a cube. Go and type in Google for yourself ancient Hebrew and get to the one that looks like it's all cubes. There's no curved, no curves. This is the fancy one. This is the romanticized one up here on the top left. And it's because, as we've already pointed out inside of the university, that Hebrew, when you drop all the letters down on themselves, they make what they call the Star of David or the hexagram or the Megan star. OK, and and so that does still let us see that these triangles, because here's another one that actually is English. This is the monogram of English, meaning the actual master code to English, where you can every letter in English and number in English can be can can be charted out on this diagram. But notice how why we see the symbol very briefly and it's like, OK, that's cool. We seem to not notice that this is a series of. What pyramids? triangles so it would lend to say then it, it needless to say it would be easy to say that this was basically when implanted when language is implanted inside of the mind it's like putting a prism or a cube or a crystal inside of the person's mind so this is what i'm saying is why i'm calling this very advanced technology because this this awareness, which is called also a fire in the mind, gives humanity an animus, like an animation, in order for them to actually start to obey a program in certain ways, okay? And some may say, what program? Exactly. What program? Are we talking C+, are we talking Fortran, BASIC? What program has humanity by chance been loaded with any programs that would kind of guide or control how they think that they would even reflect in their mind in their own language? And they would actually say to themselves, it's like, do you let me show you how how you can figure all of this out continuously redundantly. You just drunk some. Let's say I just drunk some water It's going to my stomach. Do I need to talk to the body and tell it everything that it needs to do? You, okay, get ready to put that in the small intestines. Small intestines, you ready? It, it's stupid to think that the internal system needs any kind of language. It runs on its own. So that's also what we learn in the meditation is that the more you're talking, what are you doing? You're actually going into the matrix, the matrix in your mind. And because the matrix is like in, 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 except for in the master's mind, which I'm going to, I'm going to break down etymology through etymology, who is said to be the master? Because every star is a character inside of the disc that's now rolling across in the language. And let me explain this. So how this was designed is the programs were the language and what the language was is when they issued a language, they basically kind of like pinged or brought down the power of a certain stars in a certain order to spell out your story inside of your mind. Not all the stars. So let me explain this again. Like in mysticism, they talk about drawing down the, the power of a star and they get you thinking about these angels and all that stuff. And, and, and it is real, it's, it, but it's not the way everybody thinks. It's codes because angels or angles are parts of the tetrahedron. And so it's how to pull a part of a tetrahedron that actually corresponds to something that you're attempting to manifest. So let's take a moment here. Let's just make sure we go over our diagram, make sure we're very clear. This is also not just with Hebrew, but specifically, this is also with English. But when you pull back for a moment, it's actually words. This is what words really are, especially words of power, because words of power bring down pieces from the tetrahedron to, map, to, to basically formulate whatever it is that one is speaking. So imagine again that since there's those in the know about this, 
that you would have beings that were in the space with us right now that know, oh, everybody's really in a matrix. And a matrix runs on these codes. And as long as nobody knows these codes are about them, then they'll never see how the Trojan horse has been set up because it's actually inside of the mind. And it just has to, all you have to do is, is just understand this. It's not like you need to stop talking. It's that once your consciousness knows about this, it's able to do what I'm going to talk about in the, in the gym of what we're going to be speaking on towards the end of this, because we do need to go through the process. So let's just realize once again that if you looked at this like a laser disc, actually, you know that old, that old um, music box that you turn and then it has these little, what looks like little braille pieces. And every time it turns, it plung, 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 right? And it will play out some stuff with just eight or five of those and then that Kate that that roller with the dots in the right place okay is going to play that song or that story so what the language does is it's like that roller with braille or the humps coming out in certain places and then it starts playing this song with words and you start telling yourself that this is your story it's a lullaby, okay? So watch this. So I had to take a moment because I was like, all right, well, once I was starting to crack into this, what I started realizing is, is that there were, there were certain things. Like one was clearly more of like drawing in and then the other one was thrusting out all the time. This is... P, I call it propulsion, projection. And then all of the rest of the words, even the phallic organs are all about this external. And this is why what happens still in the exoteric, like in the external worlds, is they oxidate. This is the apple that we're talking about, if you may. And apples oxidate externally really fast. And so knowledge will get corrupted really fast in matrices. So rapidly, this ancient knowledge, the moment it was released into this world, started being, started, was just basically decaying from the moment that it came in. So we're really restoring this ancient knowledge. That's why I'm trying not to go into quarrel with the world of the sun because the sun was subject to decay, it was subject to die. Versus the mother lived forever, and the ancients explained it that way. But let's keep going because you'll start seeing how it all connects, not only from the etymology, but also through the language because the language is telling a story. So I had to take a step back. And I asked myself the question again. Seven. Are you sure that A means Arak? Where did that data come from? I said, because... What happened is I went on this quest to find like etymology, etymology dictionaries, right? And I pulled like eight dictionaries off of archive.org and all of them were basically the same as one of them. So they were literally copying off of the other one and selling the book again all the way from the 1700s, 1600s. And when they explained what A was, it was so abstract. It was clear that they weren't trying to tell you the truth. But then as I start doing how I know how to find the truth, I, I couldn't seem to find correlations between the English A and, and the Auroch in, in a direct way. It was almost like an assumption. Not to mention, if your language begins with A and all ancient languages don't have vowels, it means that the A is like a phantom letter in the language and you kind of start even the language with a phantom letter so i was like okay so this was the transition i was getting back I was like seven there's no vowels so how could your language even begin with a you need to figure out and sit down for one moment i'm just gonna paraphrase this for you you need to sit down for one moment and fire the laser at this thing again because i smell a rat what language are we speaking and that's what i was saying before about that where am i at who am i 
And when you revisit that space again, what language are we speaking? So that's very easy to find out. We're speaking English, more specifically Anglo-Saxon. There is a thousand words lent from Anglo-Saxon, the core words of their language, to then formulate some 30,000 words in English. And what sits on top of the Anglo-Saxon language and governs it is Gothic. And what sits on top of Gothic are runes. So this is the ilk. This is the lineage or the story or the language that is being pushed forth in English. So it doesn't really matter kind of what everybody thinks A means. It would be really more about what did the Gothics actually say it meant to them because that's the language that we're using. You get it? So when I started looking into certain things, the first thing I was noticing is how the A itself has been going like this. <laughs> Every language that it gets into, it's actually literally been turning. And so I went in. I was like, okay, <laughs> stop the press. Like, let's, let's take 600 kilojoules of sun power from the manufacturing of the relics and divert it into the star language and actually make sure that we understand what code that we're actually running on. Because what my consciousness was saying is after understanding the whole thing about language and a story playing out was that, yeah, it's the stars. The stars are those little lumps. The story is being told through the stars. That's why you got young stars, four stars, administrators, forecast stars, cis stars, fraud stars, prank stars, test stars, mini stars, mon stars, mob stars, jest stars, masters, and disasters. <laughs> Because those are the characters that are rolling out inside of the matrix because those are the stars. And in tense, the words are basically influencing us to act out in certain characteristics of the stars. Because it's the characters in the program of a story or a spell, right? So you can see how none of this, I've deviated nowhere at all from common sense. But one of the most important words for me when I was thinking of the stars, when it came up was the Magistar. Because I know enough about etymology to know that if anyone was mastering this, it would be the Magistar. So I had to go and research what is a Magistar, the definition. Archaic a title or form of address given to scholars, especially those qualified to teach in a medieval university. Let me show it to you. Go Google it yourself. You'll find it. In its archaic form, a title or form of address given to scholars. So people say that, you know, they're scholars. They know what's going on. But do, are you qualified to speak in a medieval university? <laughs> are you qualified to speak in a medieval university? I'm sure the first question you'll ask is like, what were they doing in the medieval times? I don't know. Maybe they were like medieval. I, I don't know. They were, I don't know if we went all the way there. Now we're like full evil and they're like medieval. I don't know. Because actually, if you notice with all the mud flood stories and all this, this seems to be the times where a lot of stuff is just like getting wiped as far as anybody knowing about anything going on in those times and those segments. So that would still mean that most of the magistars, which are magis, are like really behind the scenes. And what they know specifically is they know something about the medieval knowledge. And I can tell you the seed of all knowledge is language. This is how you like, take me to your leader. Get out of the way. Who the gods? Let's get out of the way. You guys are naming yourselves and all types of stuff. Take me to your leader. Show me your runes. Show me the story. So I can tell who was here, basically. Like if I show up on a tribe 
and they're, they're talking about this is their story, then I know I can follow the trails of, of their God, if you may, and how it's been seeding and disseminating its story as it's moving through. But remember, this is about getting beyond the matrix. So you need to understand how matrices are put together and how languages are weaving. <laughs> Let us, as the scripture says, go down and confuse them. Now, I explained before that it really seemed like, especially in the context of when that scripture was written, that it was really actually more of around the medieval times of a king writing this, not so much in the biblical times. A king addressing his court of angels, if you may, saying, let's confuse these folks because they know the tower. They know about the tower. They know how to build the tower. That's the tower is Tor, okay? So they know how to build the Taurus because the language is telling them, basically. So we need to confuse the language. We need to change the code. So look at the scripture in the Bible. If that's only one thing, even if, it, if some people say, well, that God is not even real, the Bible's not even real, but that seems quite odd, though, that it, since so many people believe in that, that this would be this kind of God's behavior. Is it perhaps true? And that's what I start finding right away is that between the English, the Germanic, the high Germanic and the Gallic. I mean, it was like the language, the letters were moved all around. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Like literally people that speak the same language, their letters get moved all around. And the weird part is, especially when it crosses back over to English, the letter, the same letter or symbol is being repeated over and over again. It's repeated three times in the beginning of the English language. But we see the letters as A, B, C, D. But it's weird because really that's X, B, X, X, <laughs> which is it's which would be weird in our whole mind. Because like, well, no, that's not an X. That's a that's a C and that's a G. You see what I mean? Or, 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 or D. And I'm going to show you this is how. It all works. This is exactly how first, because what this would do specifically is it would do symbolically what happens when a, when a child comes into the world and it is now being fully separated from the mother's womb. It would cut the cord. Language is a sword that cuts the cord from the person and the womb, which is their spaceship. Right? So now they can't, kind of send their transmissions back over. They just like, Gaga, Google. <laughs> and then you got to start picking up some words like, okay, bottle, bottle. Okay, bottle, nigga, fast. Give it to me, mommy. All right, fuck it. Guess I have to get into this. But it's like, there's no more of the archaic prehistoric language that is in comprehension. You enter in a matrix and then they cut the cord because... The first letter in the code, okay? Now watch this. This is just what I'm saying. It's like checking base. I always believe that the way in which I digest consciousness, I cannot take all of the universe in one bite. So it's giving it to me in wholesome, wholesome I can't say morsels either because I kind of have my plate full with this. Even all the way up to... Two hours, an hour before this presentation, I'm still in shambles juggling symbols, trying to figure out not that I, if I know what's going on or not, because I figured that out, but how am I going to explain it to everybody? <laughs> because that would be the next big hump is if you crack the code, you would now need to figure out how to explain the code inside of the language that the code is in. Damn. Anyway, here it is. So it turns out that the first letter of the English language, if we want it to be correct, we would not look at English. We would look at Gothic because English is Gothic. Let me just, uh, my Gothic chart will come later, but in the center of all the words that I'm going to, I'm going to show you, which is just A, B, C, D. I could have stopped at C like Michael Jackson, A, B, C. Those are spells. They're basically telling you that after A, B, and C of any story, 
you're going to keep going down the path of the effects of ABC. You can see how that will work though, right? Like if you're born in life and you were experienced certain things, now the rest of your life is kind of going to be shaped and molded by those things. So technically you don't even really need to know the whole language. You just would need to know what ABC is in this language. And I did you one better and I went to D because I found out that it was literally telling a story and it was very easy to see the story. And since the story is, has to be logical, it's like a program being embedded into your mind, this is where it would begin. So it turns out that the letter A is very specifically asa, okay? Now this word will change and turn into different things from time to time, but its core spelling or core pronoun pronunciation, if you may, is this. So specifically, the interesting part about the letter A is, yes, if we turned it around, it would look like a cow's head. But that's almost like a pun on what it really is. Because the interesting part about A is, is that Okay, well, when I was researching A, it kept saying that A was X. Like, it was like I kept, when I'm trying to figure out what Asa means, it kept coming back that Asa is a spoke or axis, as it says down there, Asa, axis, right? And, and it kept freezing me up right away because I was like, how is A a X? And then I remembered in Hebrew, that Aleph, which is A, is, looks like an X. So then I knew, okay, you, I think we on to something. <laughs> Let's just keep going with this. Let's say A is an X. What is an axis? And it's almost like this is when you get smacked in the face by the higher self. Like, okay, look, we're not going to do this today. You're acting stupid. Listen to what is being said. It's an X. Remember the X, God, Ramen? <laughs> like, Think about everything that you know. Hadad acts gods, okay? So what is this acts used for? Ding, access. So I found out that basically that the word asa was a reference to access or wheel. And this word also is os. That's how it's actually pronounced. And it's spelled O-S. And it means in archaic language, the bones, which basically are a reference to the framework, right? So all this is very occult technologically, but it's very metaphysically spiritual that the bones in the human body are there is the framework, but the bones in a program or an OS or an operating system is also the language, Right. So it's basically saying that if you were to access or enter into a consciousness, which you're going to see, it's going to explain specifically that it's entering into a consciousness. You would need the type of tool to enter into that consciousness. And that tool is seen to be like an arrow or a dart. It, it, it's a it's a penetration. And so this is why it became known as the axe God. Because from archaic tools, you'll notice how many of the archaic tools, when you understand all the variants of A, you see all the archaic tools actually are shaped like this. So it's literally like it's how words become manifested, even from the most basic, crudest level, all the way up to the most advanced technologies. Now, give me one quick second. I have to load something um, that is not loaded in order for you to understand also how much time I actually put into this. It wasn't like this stuff was just plastered over the internet and readily available to dissect. I had to go to JSTOR. I had to use memberships and stuff that, that I haven't used in a long time. I've had to, to crawl websites and web pages with, uh, with, with, with no... So I basically... For me to get to the knowledge, it was literally like, 
they, there was a layer over it that was so superficial that you would never even know what they were talking about. But if you kept digging and going deeper as I did, and as you can also do yourself with the references that I'm going to give you, you see clearly what they're actually referring to. And then you can see why this would be like the holiest of holies of all of the knowledge, because it's the access into the consciousness. OK, so the first command of the A, what the A is doing is like it looks like scissors also because it's really an X is it's cracking into the it's cracking into something. See, you don't even need to let yourself assume what it would be cracking into. You only need to go to the next letter. So just give me a moment because I need to load a couple things. Let me go to my self-substantiation folder here. Let me load the Orbis Eruditi, which is basically the all of the languages was put together and remastered by the librarian of the British Library from an earlier work. I will add all of this to this presentation also when it's posted in the university. Hold on, I'm just adding a couple things here. I need to add Gothic. So that way also there is a visual. So it, I don't want anything that I'm saying to come across like I'm inventing something. Because again, if you don't know the code, you can't get out. That's just how serious it is. And people be joking about this. They'll be so haughty about this. They will think that they can exit the matrix and not even know the code to Zion's mainframe. I'm going to show you how all this stuff that they're talking about is very real. But the reason why they're talking about it like a joke is because it's sinking people further and further into never really understanding what it's all about. So they remain disorientated. And because from what I've been able to prove, when you come into this world that basically the king of this world feels like you owe him. So you come into debt with that king. And from that point, you start accruing all these debts based on everything that you're using in the kingdom, which is all this angelic realm and this gods and their angels. You see what I mean? But that is really why we're taught to like revere them. That's basically the old system of control over the human beings. And it's been popping off on this planet. It's so wild that even some of the etymology I've had to come back around and connect. I'm also going to disclose later on in this build how even this word jinn, which has been demonized, right? We even went through it. It's like, yo, the jinn or this other life form, they seem to be electric, blah, 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 blah. The jinn is a reference to G-Y-N in the ancient tongue, which is the full expression of the female, as in gynecology or gynecology, so you're pronouncing it wrong. And all any word with G-Y-N, even hygiene, is a reference to the feminine force. So you can see how since the Arabs are bent on hating women and the divine feminine, that's why they're covering, they're covering the woman. They got this big-ass cube out there because they worship the cube. They worship the sun, the goat. Ram, Aries, you see what I mean? So for them, they don't want anybody to ever figure out how to dissolve all their debts and get out of the matrix. And they're masters of the matrix. That's why you see the Saudis, they out there with all the money. Now they got all the AI and they have the Saudi prince roll in with a, ro with a, with a, with a robot, with a droid protecting him. And listed all the weapons and stuff that was, you see what I mean? So they're, they're, they're going to be in the matrix. They figure something out here. You know, you got folks here. It's going to eventually come to them. When, mom? <laughs> Jesus is coming. When, mom? I don't even know if we really want Jesus to come. Think about what we're really talking about. But look how it all unfolds. It's saying it's breaking into something. What is it breaking into? B. People's exhibit B. The bear cane, which is the second word in the Gothic language. Let me just show that here. This is Asa Berkan. Okay, that's RB. It looks like an upside down R. So that's where the confusion is coming in is because the languages have been scrambled. It's literally like someone has scrambled the code. So the code to the matrix is, is scrambled inside of most people's minds, almost everyone's. And the moment that it's unscrambled, you can get out of the matrix. Watch how this works. So 
in their story that they are putting as a program inside of the minds. And again, I can, I can give you an as above variant of this code, meaning I could be positive about this code and the things that it's saying. Unfortunately, because we're living in a two-faced world, I could equally be negative. The real variant here is what is the truth? And the truth is what has befallen us, okay? So I want to make this very clear because the glassy-eyed ones that just want to celebrate all the time, like, oh, there's nothing to worry about because they're kind of like hypnotized. They want to make everything be good. And I get that because you can do that. It's a paradox. You're able to make it good. You're able to make it bad. But the only true variable, though, is, is that the truth, though? And the way for you to test the truth is to actually see what's happening right now in the present. So the reason why I can define the code the way that I'm defining the code is because I'm in the future. I'm after the code has been deployed and I'm looking at the people and I don't see them doing the as above variant of this. Which will also be very misconstrued in itself because of the order that it comes in. So from that point, I would only have to come to the conclusion that the as below variant has been deployed. So what is that? So we say A is basically the code being deployed to access the consciousness or the operating system in order to create a framework or architecture inside of the consciousness of what? B. B in the Futhark, which is Bear Cain, means a birch tree or a birch goddess. Now, that's the first place they'll throw you because most of the definitions are of trees because you'll end up having to cross runes from time to time or Gothic from time to time back to runes. Goth runes are published all over the place. Gothic isn't. Gothic to find the actual meaning of the words. Now you got to be in JSTOR. You got to be in all. Then they give you supplements and little snippets of what words are meaning. And they're sitting there elaborating for 20 pages off of. I don't even know who are these people. Is, are they AI? Because they write all of these books elaborating on something that will bore the death out of anyone reading it. Oh, and, and Spinsky said on, on Grant's ISDP that the notion of the term was, and they just go on with this stuff for pages and pages and pages and pages. It's like, is this a real person writing this? <laughs> because when you get to it and you boil it down, the birch goddess was Mother Earth. Finally, when you dig, you find out the birch. Now, there's a poem. Anytime you research Bear Cane, you'll see a poem that says, Birch has the greenest leaves of any shrub. Loki was fortunate in his deceit. And I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> so every place that the, the birch tree or Bear Cane story is represented, it leaves this quote from their ancient book. So layman's terms would say, remember we were talking about how the leaves on the tree are the DNA? So it's like basically saying that the beings that are here right now from this birch tree, that we're basically the greenest. Like we have the most abundance. They say the birch tree will sprout up all over the place. It's like a woman pregnant. That's why the rune later on became associated with pregnancy as it says, it's, it's also the woman's rune symbolizing gestation and birth. But then they give you this symbol, which actually, when, which uh, I can't actually show. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm not even showing the screen here. Okay. All right, so let's rewind here. So we're talking about Bear Khan. Bear Khan basically is the birch tree, which is the birch goddess in Gothic. And this is also this is the Bluetooth symbol, believe it or not. Uh, and... And it also is the symbol of infinity, which is our B. But notice how they want to put a straight line on it continuously, which is called squaring the circle, by the way. But we'll come back to that in a moment. But it's cryptically saying that the B or the birch tree is the mother goddess, the great mother, the womb, the Taurus. So read the code. We're breaking into something. What? The Taurus, the mother goddess, the holiest of holies. Why? 
This is logic, okay? Because remember, when you program a language in a computer, it's logic. The computer is not really smart. You got to tell it every single thing to do. So that's what a story is. A story tells you everything to do. So anytime you don't have to ask what, you don't have to make up what comes next. You look to the next character in the code. It turns out that in Gothic, as you'll notice here, there is no C. <laughs> and it begins how the English language gets thrown off and the code is literally encrypted because there's no C in Gothic. There's a G. The third letter of the English language is G. And this is why the Masons run around with the G because what they're doing or, or, or what they're basically custodians of is bringing about the G. So let's understand what that actually means. So specifically, G is a reference to Giba. Giba, also known as Gaifu, is a direct reference to a gift. And this is how you'll see it. You will have to dig before you ever find out what kind of gift are we talking about, though. It'll just say Gaifu means gift in Futhark Ruin or the runes. Specifically, I'll read several passages here from different works. Observe that in all of this, there is no suspicion of any confusion, either in Greek or in Gothic, between the words meaning sacrificial gift and those meaning sacrifice or sacrificial victim. Gaifu means gift, but, Cl but Claus says, Claus understands it as a religious offering. Grimm says, for the sake of the possibility of the etymology, the etymology tentatively conjectured as a possible emendation of Aber, which is another form of Giba, this form being referred to as the Zepar or the Zeber means cattle, money, or a sacrificial victim. It goes on and it specifically mentions that Giba or Gaifu as a, is not just any gift, it's a gift to, and you'll find out in a moment, because you would have to write the code. And the code doesn't need to be written. It's already written, but it's specific. It's saying now there's a gift. And as it says here, in both cases, here's a passage. In both cases, the reading of the symbol is the same. It sacralizes a battle of sacrifice for Odin, either in the form of a sacrifice made in the bog or as a sacralized battle like we know it from a narrative in the Stibajar Batar Svalkapa, where the leader of an army emulates a myth of Odin throwing his spear at the enemy with the formula, Odin owns you all. Okay, let's pause for a moment here. Now, this is what I was saying about the whole debt thing. Now, we know Odin or Wooden is Wednesday, not just from American gods. We know that Wednesday is also Thoth, and Thoth, and we've already synced all of Thoth. We know Thoth is basically the sun god. Thoth is Jesus or Hermes. And we synced all of that already. So what it's literally saying in this language is that they want to access the mother goddess in order to sacrifice the beings that are in that to their sun god. <laughs> and that's very specific in this. And all of these letters, as you see, the A, the G, these are all X's. So as I said before, it's X, B, X is really what the words are saying, except we've made an entire language out of something that is basically just scrambled and mixed up. So I had to, like, I was still, I was running out of time. You know, I, there was a lot. There's still a lot more to this because there's some Taurus build on this too. And as I said, it, it, it does get better, but I, we have to dive all the way into the matrix. Like, do you think that something like what we're experiencing right now, where they're now jabbing folks and acting crazy and all this stuff, that that can all come about 
if there was some magnificent force here that somebody had tapped into already, the only way someone's going to tap into a magnificent force is they figure out all the, the, how the codes to the matrix works. This is why, let me explain why. So that world, let's say the world of the Taurus, the powers and the abilities in which that are there have little to any effect here. It's like, it's not for this. This is not even worthy of that. This is why you can be on one, like way up there in your vibration. And people are be sitting around you and they're not even feeling it. Because all that is coming from the inside. So then, yes, while this helps you in constructing your external matrix, Technically, the things that prevent stuff from happening to you in the external matrix are related to all of the rules in the construct of the matrix in all its science and thermodynamics and finances and, 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 and martial arts and all of that stuff that comes with it. We always love to bring the esoteric spiritual component to that. And what that really is, is language. But we also get it confused for also what goes on in the Taurus, which we should not. Because then you will be trying to bring what is here, right? The languages and stuff into that. And it doesn't work there. <laughs> so you see how that works? Like, so that does not work here. And this does not work there. So this is why we're betwixt. Because we're in two worlds. And most people can only master one world before they automatically melt down in their mind and try to do, and they go into a good evil, which is a red shift, blue shift. And then at that point, it's just like they, they melt down like a nuclear reactor. Their, their apple falls. Their Taurus field starts distributing Ra, which in Hebrew means evil. It's radiation because human beings can't live in it. You see what I mean? So this like in one language, Ra means the giver of life. In another language, Ra means the remover of life. Because that's why the worlds are, they're constantly in themselves in this yin, yang, yin, yang, yin, yang. But see, with the Taurus or the great mother's world, it's all encompassed in that field versus in the sun's matrix. It's mostly electric. And that's why they love the technology. That's why they always running wires all over the place. That's how they operate. And I don't even think it's a male completely. Like it, it's starting to show evidence that the reason why you don't really hear the daughter mentioned a lot is because the daughter was the real Messiah or originator of the matrix because she has a womb inside the matrix. You see what I mean? So it's just like from that point, you can bring in all types of things that are physical into the matrix. So that's why I say Venus or Lucifer is a, is a woman still in most of, of every ancient book. Right. But that's what then would connect why woman would be called the jinn. And why the, why the Arabs say men and jinn. So really what they're just saying is men and women because they're, they're in their own know about that. Women were here before man who was created on the word were here. What women were was something created from the mother goddess or the Taurus first. And she was more of like a serpent or a dragon or a rainbow if you would try to behold what we were talking about. So let's keep going here because, again, this is about a specific code, though. All that gloriousness of the ancestors, that's, that's, that's a total story, if you may. But this one in Gothic, it ends up here with D. Well, at least that's where I ended. There's a potential that I would go through every letter here. It depends on how instrumental I see that uh, that, that would be. Also, I did want to pass a book um, let me see if I can, um, yeah, let me just take a moment to upload this work to, um, Geneva inside of the book club section. I've titled it in grafted English, and it is that book that explains to you the thousand words that are actually inside in Germanic. And, um, actually I'm not going to do that now because now it, uh, it doesn't seem like I'm longer than Geneva, but it explains to you the words that are actually in Germanic, which we're going to go over a few of them and how they correspond to English. But it's, it's clearly written by a person who has a metaphysical awareness. 
even though the book is so old, the scanning has mold on it. <laughs> this one was a goner. So here we are on the fourth symbol, which is DAGs. And this one was the most difficult to find. And it's because the Bible kind of takes off with this story of Dagon. And from that point, Dagan is kind of like erased from history when Dagan was the father of all of the gods. So you would think that the father of all the gods would become the most important God, but that God would also be the one that wanted to remain the most hidden. And that's why the only statue of Dagan, the head's knocked off. It's, the, it's, a, it's a hidden God. Now, in the hidden powers, which is known as the Amen, there's two hidden powers. The Amen of this world is this power that we're going to be referring to here in relation to the words. Okay? The invisible power on the highest level is actually the Taurus. The Taurus is the original priest, priest craft, priestess craft of Amen because it's a pun, the hidden one. When you're uninitiated, which means your third eye is not open, you cannot see that there is a Taurus or an energetic field around everybody's body. But there is. It's hidden. And it's the most powerful thing. So do you see why Amen was known as the hidden one? Because Amen means that it's a real thing they're telling you about. You cannot see the auric field around people, but it is the most powerful thing. And it's, if you said what was the most powerful being on, in the matrix, it would be the Taurus field around your body, which is your soul. I'm going to show you that here in a moment. And so that means that the hidden one is your soul. And since your soul is your only real, I wouldn't even call it an identity, you can see how soul searching at this stage would be the best thing that you can do because now you will really be able to get yourself out of debt. Now, I'm going to show you how all of this works here in a minute because it's all replete. So DAGs, I mean, I was hunting DAGs all around Google, but I'll tell you, once I'm coming for you, there's nothing that you can do. It's only a matter of time. Like if I'm trying to crack a code, it's only a matter of time because the words can't really change. And once you know enough about all the words, it will start speaking to you. And then next thing you need to do is just make sure that everybody else understands what it said. So here we are at letter D again. Or, 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 yeah, I say again because it's also an X. Even though you see it here as even a backward six. Actually, as it says, it, it, it's as an allophone, the end of the word of before and the voiceless consonant, it is always written as dags, which meant day. Okay. And that's why, like, there was like this thing where they kept saying, oh, it means day. And I was like, nah, we need to go deeper. What, what does day mean to them? Right. So, and as it continues, it is, in some borrowed words, it's the special letter X. <laughs> which represents the Greek letter X or CH, which is the Christus, the Christ. Okay. Because this is a dag is a sun God, but not like how you see the sun. This is where you start getting into Thule, Ultima Thule, the Nazis, the worship of the black sun, Cthon or the Cthulhu, HP Lovecraft, OTO, the golden Dawn, uh, Scottish Rite Freemasonry, so they all worship dags, which also is is uh, in this in this tense the the vicar, uh, which actually means alien. That book that I'm going to give you it means the changer or the alien. I'm going to show you here that in the ancient language the word vicar and that's what it means. So the vicar is in the place of dags. Okay, now personally, intuitively, I feel like that this energy is dead. I feel like that what's happening is, is that these thieves are not letting dags die. <laughs> it's like Jesus had two thieves on the cross next to him. And it's like this, this particular God, pers I mean, this, this way of life, this, this kind of energy is basically death in itself. So it has no life to it. So the only way that it can live is that people come into the world and actually start becoming the representatives of it. And it can only live as long as somebody is representing it. 
So I, I just need to make that very clear because you know what? On the most basic level, because DAGs is really L, okay? It's kind of like saying, that's why I say that Baal was the son of Dagan. It says in the Ugaric expression, Baal, son of Dagan, has been the subject of several studies which attempt to resolve the contradiction between the depiction of Baal as El, son of one of the, on, on the one hand, and the expression of Baal as the son of Dagan. And they will conclude here that basically Baal, and I mean that basically uh, 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 El is Dagan. So it's kind of saying in its most core scientific meaning that if there's not people electric can't move you see what i mean it's like if we're not here it can't animate because it it needs something to animate through you see what i mean so at the most basic level its desperation is it needs to have things to move through because it's electric and if there's nothing to move through then it kind of sits there just inanimate and it's not willing to live in that state. That's what I was saying by inanimate is when you get into the Taurus field, into the cocoon, and you slowing down your heart rate and everything, and you just dip on the whole reality. You see what I mean? So you can imagine what is the opposite pole of that? It's like erratic, static electricity chaos. That's why they call it the thunderer. It was like thundering and lightning bolts and X's and cuts and all of that, because all that was all a part of it. That's what they kept saying, X, X, X. And that's, that's as much as they needed to explain it in coiniform. So as we see that Dags is Dagon, he's also Dagda. It also puts a spotlight on da the, the Dogen. Because as I said before, it was interesting how the Dogen symbol, they straightened out, <laughs> they straightened the lines of the mother goddess. And even when I saw Big Bai and, and the Dogen, the ones who had inherited, the sons that had inherited tradition, when I saw them on YouTube, uh, Carrie Cassidy asked them, what can we do to help in restoring the balance of the world? And, and these guys had the, had the audacity to say, you don't need to do anything. Humans can't do anything. That's all of our responsibility. We are the ones that talk to the gods. And I had to do one of them, Greta Thunberg, Thunberg how dare you? Like, here we go with that same program again. But at the end of the day, most people will try to verify, especially in the African traditions, all of their mysticism back to that one tribe, right? Which, uh, who's that? Um, one of our brothers, I think that's Brother Sanchez, just told them a whole nother framework. But let me just explain this very clearly here, what we're talking about. So Degas is, is their sun god, and they sacrifice to their sun god. It's like the old Roman times. It's still going on. Meanwhile, this is us. So every star point inside of our mac macrocosm is connected into the Taurus field. So that visual should just help you alone to understand why you have so many connections. It's like when they call you to connect, <laughs> This is why. But your connection can basically be, be fused within the use of the language because what will happen is, is that you will forget to go within and you'll start talking and thinking that talking and, and external is going to get you where you, where you really want to go. But in truth, it's actually taking you further away. And until you learn how to come back into yourself, then you keep looping into these matrices. And the component that is making that happen is the language. So it's common sense. If you ever wanted to figure the way out of something, you have to figure out how you came in. And if the language was what brought you into the program, it's what gave you access to the matrix, then the language is what will give you the ability to leave the matrix. So you're basically climbing back the ladder of lights or the story that has been told. And then now you're actually diving into your true self. And I'm going to show you here. We're going to take a, a brief break. Well, I won't even call it a break. <laughs> These words. We're going to take a brief hole. <laughs> I don't know what to say. And then we're going to come forward. <laughs> 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to reveal some key words in the English language that are inside of this work that I'm also going to pass to you. So that way you can get the correct definition of words that we're using like soul. And then there will never be any confusion because, you know, there started to become this confusion about the difference between a soul and a spirit. And I, I can't lie. It was throwing me too. Now I see why, because there's two different worlds and one world appears so close. That's what all this Merkaba mysticism, all these hexagrams, this banishing ritual, these cubes, these pyramids, all that is the tools in which are needed or the angles are in which are needed to master or to control the matrix by dialing into the programs and the stars and then actually and, and formulating, because that's what magic is, formulating what you want to manifest because you're speaking the words of manifestation. You see? So again, I'm not here to tell you this is the bad one. I'm here to tell you these are the schools of mastery. If you wanted to kind of like go beyond what they say, usurp, go beyond the serpent. If you wanted to go beyond Elohim, you will go to the great mother. And I'm going to show you how in ancient Sumerian, they explain this just directly. So first we're going to take it. We're going to get, we're going to take a moment. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take a moment. And, uh, I'm going to turn on some tunes, stretch out because I want to, you know, I want to pace myself. I only have about 30 to 45 more minutes. I trust. And when I come forward, we're going to finish demystifying what's in the language and we're going to set everything clearly inside of our consciousness. So that way, when we go forward from here, you will just see the code just falling down in front of you. Like you will see so clearly to everything that's going on because now you have knowledge of both of the worlds. And I don't care where you go, what teacher you find, whatever. If they've reached the ultimate truth, they're going to be talking about this. And what's going to be interesting is, is that when you're able to listen to anything and analyze it from this framework, you'll be able to see so fast where the errors are and you'll be able to prove why that error is there. So as I said before, the difference between these two worlds is sp a specific thing. And we need to understand that as you see this world continues to turn, which who knows if it even turns. Here's, here's a great analogy for, see, the, the field of the, of the great mother is, is full in every sense. It is complete. So in many respects, it is heavy. Okay, it's deep. So that means that if, if, if the great mother's world is that, because it has all the memories, all the accumulation, everything, what, since this world is the opposite, what would this world be? It would basically be empty. But to you, it seems full. How is that? It's because the same thing. If I open up my phone and I have a picture of somebody, is that the person? When they say that the phone memory is full, does that make the phone heavier? So when we talk about when, when this Elohim says, I created man in the image and in my likeness, which that being was created from a word, this is just basically a, fro a program full of words. So it's very light. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? Like people think this is heavy, but this is only an image, a glimpse. And this is why when you get into the spiritual framework, it just gets so serious. It's like, yo, what's going on in here? It's like, yo, don't move. And what happens is, is that we need to be in tune with that as our real existence. And I'm going to explain why here in a moment, but I'm, I'm glad that I, I, I was able to revisit this because I was almost forgetting it. But we need to, to be in tune with realizing why if you leave this world and all you know is this code, and this code is what's most familiar to you, your next advent is back into what is familiar to you. If, because the other stuff would just feel uncomfortable. 
It would feel uncomfortable to be in the mother goddess. You would feel like that you were like surrounded, even though you could go everywhere. You just couldn't do it externally, which is why it's all unified. But for those who want to do the external, they can go to the world of the sun, which is where we are now. And here they dial, like we talked about, they dialed in space time. Once they create a language, a measurement, now they're going to build with that language and those measurements. And then everything, all of the animals were all words spoken, taken as vibrations and then chiseled and carved into the thing that you're seeing. And then once it's spoken into, then the word keeps reverberating in this basically like a like what you would say is like an artificial womb and it starts creating more and more replicas of that and it starts to reflect on itself it's just like a mirror box now you see what you think is the opposite of you called the female you interlope with her create another and then every single thing that you're thinking is happening but it's happening on so many different layers you're just in different layers of time you got dreams you're dreaming of this world. That's why I told y'all the dream world is another layer of the matrix. That's really where most of, if you say any words, you see immediately what those words do. That's what I told you from my own experience in lucid dreaming. You say a deity's name, boom, the deity shows up. You say certain words, the entire worlds are destroyed and all this kind of stuff. But remember, it's all light. The following clip is exclusive content from the university. Access over 300 videos and 26 courses with advanced metaphysics on demand. Jump in live chats with Savan and the rest of the tribe. New materials are available monthly along with guides and regimens. Subscribe today and save $25 off your first month membership. Links are in the descriptions. Subscribe to Secret Energy TV 